Hello and welcome. The end of the working week of the 27th of October, recording this on Sunday, the 29th of October, Australian time. And this is the chart here in relation to Bitcoin. What a week it's been for crypto. As you can see, we really jumped out of the gates on Monday, Australian time, which would have been about Sunday over in the United States. And it has just kept on going all the way through until it hit $35,000 mark in terms of the Bitcoin resistance area from way, way, way back. And then it has literally just stumbled and basically hit a wall. Hmm. Is this basically um, stumbling across a couple of uh, people's minds as to, well, what is happening here? Well, not really. You know, it's it's essentially just a supply and supply and demand aspect overall. If we've had a lot of people previously buying around about the thirty-five thousand dollar mark, and then all of a sudden they're basically now saying, oh, "I can get out about the same price as where I got in and basically break even," it's basically supply and demand, nothing more. So we've now got an area where we've had that resistance aspect. That is what's happening here. And you're going to find a common theme of this as we're discussing throughout this entire presentation. So that is essentially where we're sitting at this point. Now, can it, is, is there enough buying pressure to push through this resistance area? That is essentially what we're going to be seeing in relation to, to cryptocurrencies over the next couple of weeks. So this will prove to be an interesting time in relation to crypto. Could be external events, could be the ETF coming through, a potential ETF. You know, you can blame it on whatever you like. It really comes down to the supply and demand aspects more than anything. Um, and also, as you can see with the chart aspects there, we had that previous level of resistance at 28,260, which was where 28,260, we were around about that area even um, uh, over here pretty much um, or, was about a couple of weeks ago, that was when everything really started up and then everything just carried through. You might be saying, okay, well, why was last week in particular the really, really big catalyst of the big drive through that green candle? Well, take a look at the chart here. It basically beat the prior wick of the, of the area where it broke through in terms of the, uh, in terms of the uh, level of interest of where everyone was interested in buying it. That is pretty much about it. So, the technicals really drove everything that was going on with Bitcoin. But another area that you really, really need to pay attention to is the next chart in terms of Ethereum. Now, I've been banging on about this for quite some time in terms of Ethereum acting as an anchor down over here where it was really at the base of that green zone area. And now, when we look at last week's action, it shot through as well and is now released that anchor. So overall, now it is acting very, very similar and in parallel with Bitcoin. So now we've literally got breadth coming through. So it's not just singular cryptocurrencies moving along. We've got the whole range of cryptos coming along. Now, last week we were talking, there was Bitcoin moving along. There was Bitcoin Cash. There was Solana. And a couple of others were a about to make a bit of a launch. We'll go into those in a few moments, but a few others were about to about to make a move. But we had a few cryptocurrencies moving along, being Bitcoin, Solana, and Bitcoin Cash. So there was a little bit of breath creeping into the market, enough to push things through. Now we've got a much broader aspect coming along. That's been enough to push things through. But even as you take a look through this particular chart here with Ethereum, it's hit resistance areas as well. Major resistance areas around about the 1800 mark, as you can see right here. There's a couple of resistance area resistance points right there, and it's really, really hit its head along those lines. You can see the number of wicks overall there. It reached as high as the 1850s area. It reached that particular resistance point there as well, but really swiftly came back down there and is now trading well below the 1800 mark again. So there are some caution points to really take, pay into attention with um, a lot of these cryptos at this point. You're going to see that as a common theme. But it is trading very, very well above the 10-day moving average and the 30-day moving average as well too. There is a lot of bullishness. However, even though it's trading well in terms of a bullishness aspect, being so far above as well too, 
these may need a breather in terms of coming back down too, especially combating a lot of these resistance areas. Going back to Bitcoin, same thing can be said with that as well too. There could be a lot of these aspects where these breather aspects of coming back down, trying to find a support level, considering the fact that it's well above a lot of other prior support levels. Where is the support for Bitcoin here right now? Where's the support for Ethereum right now? The previous support area is here. It, it hasn't established a new support area here. Is it going to have to come back and test this support area before it launches back off again? These are the questions that we need to see from a technical perspective before we can see another launch through resistance areas. Heading across to Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Cash is actually looking to be really, really heading towards a little bit of struggle town here. Okay, So overall, this came through, did very, very well, but is now really combating against both of these resistance areas here. So there's quite a lot to contend with here. It's come right back down to this support area here. Will it stay in the support area here and now bounce off? But it's now in no man's land between 10 and 30 day moving averages, almost coming back towards the green zone area. The level of interest has increased up to $238, which is the top of this green zone area here. This is the area in terms of contention between buyers and sellers. Now, if it comes back down right through this area, which has already tested this here, on Friday Australian time, it bounced right off that 30-day moving average and came back up here. If it keeps testing this area here, we could start seeing some selling again. So it's come back and tested this, resist this support area here, bounced off it for now, but if we see some continuing more testing going on, we could start seeing it coming back more into the green zone area here. So overall, Bitcoin Cash is starting to struggle now. And it's also testing against this former resistance or form of support resistance it's really a resistance support area kind of thing there it's testing that right now as we speak how about litecoin litecoin is looking like a very very similar kind of situation okay it's starting to potentially come back towards that no man's land area here as well too it's actually tested back up towards these resistance areas here coming now and really testing all of these potential resistance areas here, coming very, very close to this green zone area here as well too. So there are a few very, very interesting dynamics here. This is relative weakness compared to, say, Bitcoin and Ethereum, and very, very similar in terms of Bitcoin Cash. So not as much strength here in Litecoin, even though the indicators themselves are not looking too bad. But this could be starting to turn and starting to starting to cool. So... Interesting times ahead here for Litecoin too. Polkadot, perhaps the same kind of thing, okay? Really, really having a bit of a go here at that resistance level, but, fall, but falling back behind it. Also, you can see that it had tested that resistance level back here as well and failed miserably going back right down to the lows, lows ever for Polkadot there too. But, you know, it's still testing that 10-day moving average there, that blue line there. But where's it going to go from here? Is it going to just basically test that resistance zone here? Or potentially even come back down into the buyers and sellers area around about that spot there? So some interesting areas there. Solana, though, is probably the, at the moment, crypto of strength overall. It's holding this support area. It's come back to test that support area. It's gone through all these resistance areas here, coming back to the support area here. Should it maintain this support area and potentially even take off, it's actually looking pretty good. But it needs to maintain the support area. That is the caveat. But looking okay and reasonable distance away from all of this buying and, buying and, and selling area, that could be potentially happening. So the level of interest is still rising. Okay, yep, that's that level of interest that I'm talking about there, and that's where it starts. So it's still rising along, but it's providing a good support area to bounce away from. But it's already got this other support area here and at 30 odd level, 31 level. So looking pretty good in terms of things, the way that's going in terms of momentum and keeping on going, should it bounce off that and then be able to make new highs and momentum keep on going from there, which possibly could be using that 10 day moving average for. Dogecoin, 
Had a brilliant run. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. But look at that. Bounced off a former resistance level there near the 75, well, near the 7.5 cent mark. And then it's just basically come back down here. Now it's just trying to find its way, seeing if it can actually find some support from a 10 day moving average, but could be potentially coming back down to test this support line, that blue line. You can only just vaguely see it beneath that level of interest. Okay. So some interesting times here ahead for Dogecoin as well as it tries to establish itself there because it's had a massive run here. It's got to try and find a decent support level to actually bounce off from and keep us run going. Where is that support level? Does it have to come all the way back down here to actually find that support or can it find it halfway through? At the moment, it hasn't found it yet. So it's just trying to find where that support level is at this stage. Cardano. Okay, this is another one that I actually mentioned in last week is probably looking very, very tempting to actually go for and it's done extremely well. Okay, so that's the, that's a, quite a nice one there. I had that tweet coming, going out um, at the beginning of, of last week. So um, yeah, hopefully a few people will be able to take some advantage of this one. It's actually done very, very nicely. And it's really just tackled against former resistance and it's just it's banging, banging against it a couple of times Will it break through and continue on its merry way and then tackle the next resistance point after that? So these are the kind of things to think about here. However, the strength is looking quite good and may actually do so. But much like I've mentioned with Dogecoin just a few moments ago as well, where's its next support level? It hasn't established another support level here in between these areas here at this stage. So that's something to consider there too. We've got the 10-day 10, 10 moving average rising very steeply at that. However, this, is pro this could be reliant on the movement of the other coins as well. If they fall, this will more than likely fall as well and could fall quite sharply considering there's no support at this stage apart from down there. Although if you've managed to pick it up from around about this, this point down here, you're doing pretty well with it. But how much are you willing to keep on the table in relation to that particular trade? Especially considering the fact it's already bounced against those resistance points there. Interesting times ahead for crypto. Keep an eye on these resistance levels. That is what the, the key message is from the charts here this particular week. And you can really see that. And we'll go back up to the Bitcoin overall at the top there as well. You can really see it. It's already bounced, bounced against it three times in this particular week. Could this be a warning sign in relation to where this is going next, especially with overheated, in particular, RSI? That doesn't mean it can't stay in overbought territory. No, it can stay in overbought territory for quite some time. Absolutely. But where is the support level? That's the question. Where is the support level for this, as well as the uh, a number of other cryptocurrencies at this point in time? Where is the support level? Once it establishes that support level, then it's all right, but it doesn't mean that it has to come back down here to find it. I'll leave it there for the week. All the best with the, with the trading for cryptos at this point in time. Hope it all goes well for you. Um, have, uh, feel free to come on over to the ASX Traders United Facebook page. There's lots of discussion going on about this over there, as well as stocks. Feel free to come along and uh, check out that particular uh, video, which has just been released as well in terms of the weekly review for that. And there's also the long-term review for both crypto as well as stocks to check out as well too. So all the best for trading for the week. I'll catch up with you again next week and feel free to leave any comments and uh, likes that you do like as well there too. And make sure you subscribe for the latest updates as well, especially over at TradingView as well. I'll keep you up to date with a few things there too. All right, catch up with you again next week. Bye for now.